In this lesson, I'm going to introduce the factor and remainder theorem. Now, some teachers really complicate this, and I've seen some, some textbooks that really do confuse this section. It is so easy. All you have to do is the following. I want you to take this equation that you see over here and let x be 1. So just plug 1 into that, and what would you get? Well, if we go plug 1 in, you're going to get an answer of 5. So what does that mean? It means that the number x equals to 1 is not a factor and the remainder is 5. So in a test they could either ask you to see if x equals to 1 is a factor or they could ask you in the bracket form. So they would give you the expression and then they would say is x minus 1 a factor and then they would say of and then they would give you this equation over here. So remember when they give you the bracket form then you must always do the opposite. So if it says minus 1 over here, then you must plug 1 into the equation. So nonetheless, the number 1 is not a factor of that expression, and the remainder is 5. We're now going to plug minus 4 into that expression, and when you do that, you get a get, you're going to get an answer of 0. So what that means is that minus 4 is a factor. Okay. So when you get an answer of 0, it means that it is a factor. In a test, they might say, is the expression x plus 4 a factor? Then remember, the opposite of x plus 4 is minus 4. So you'd plug minus 4 into the equation. If you get an answer of 0, then it is a factor. I mean, I've seen some teachers show this using long division. So they would do something like x3 plus 3x squared minus 3x plus 4. And then they would put x plus 4 over here. And then they would do division, and they would see if you get a remainder or not. I mean, that is mathematically correct, but it's overly complicated. Then lastly, we're going to let x equal 2. And when you do that, you're going to get an answer of 18. What that means is that 2 is not a factor of that expression, because the remainder is 18. So only when you get an answer of 0, then it's a factor. It's like doing normal division. Um, if I say 36 divided by 3. Well, if we did it the really long way, we'd say 3 goes into 3 once, and then 3 goes into 6 twice. So the answer is 12, and there's no remainder. So does 3 fit into 36? Yes, because the remainder is 0. The same thing we are doing here. If you plug the number into the expression, and you get an answer of 0, then it means that it is a factor. But if you get an answer like 18, then it means it's not a factor, and the remainder is 18. So this number here is almost like the remainder. So when you get a 0, it means your remainder is 0, which means it's a factor. Then, just once more, when they say x, when, when they say x is 2, another way they could ask it in a test is x minus 2. They would say, is x minus 2 a factor of, and then they would go write out that expression over there. Then remember you just switch it to the positive of that number and then you just plug it in and see if you get an answer of zero. And that's it. I promise you that's all you need to know for factor and remainder theorem.